Okay, welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Maths Channel. I'm now answering question number six from the Pure Mathematics P2 January 2022 International A-Level Edexcel paper. And this question here is about circles and equations of circles. Um, first of all, you've got this um, circle that's drawn. The points P and Q and R are marked on the circle with their coordinates. They are li they lie on the on the circle C, mean upon the circumference of the circle, as shown in Figure One. Show the angle PQR is 90 degrees. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw a line between P and Q and between Q and R. And basically what we have to do is we have to show that this angle here is a right angle, 90 degrees. All right, so now there's different ways we could do this, some longer than the others. One of the ways would be, for example, to find the length of PQ and the length of QR and the length of PR. And um, if that's a, a right angle, then PR would be the hypotenuse of a right angle triangle. And Pythagoras' theorem would apply. So if, this, if the length of if PR squared is the same as QR squared plus PQ squared, then it would be a right angled triangle. So therefore, PQR would be right angle. However, that's a lot of work. There's a much easier way of doing it, and that is by using gradients, because we know that uh, the gradient of a line and it's a line that's perpendicular to it are negative reciprocals of each other. Or in other words, if you multiply the gradient of a line by the gradient of a line that's perpendicular to it, you'll always get negative 1 as a result. So if we can find the gradient of PQ, so if we can first find the gradient of the line from P to Q, which is going to be the change in Y, which is... 14 minus minus 30 over the change in x which is 23 minus 15 okay that's going to give us um, 14 minus minus 30 is 30, 14 plus 30 which is 44 divided by 23 minus 15 that's going to be 8 mm, 4 goes into both of these so if you divide both by 4 you have 11 over 2 so that's a gradient between p and q and if you find the gradient between Q and R, you're going to have the change in Y, which is negative 30 minus 26. And you have the change in Y, that's change in X. Change in Y is 15 minus minus 7. That's going to be negative 56 over, and that's, hold on, that's a mistake here. Forgive me for that. Sorry about that. Be very careful here. Negative 30 minus 26. Minus negative 26. Minus 30 minus minus 26 over 5 minus mi 15, sorry, minus minus 7. 15 minus minus 7. So you subtract these from those. So negative 30 minus minus 26, which is going to give you, of course, negative 30 plus 26, which is negative 4 over... And 15 minus minus 7 is going to be, <laughs> sorry, 15 plus 7, which is 22. And both of these are divisible by 2, which gives you minus 2 over 11. So as we can see, these two gradients are negative reciprocals. Okay, it means you turn it upside down and you multiply by minus 1. But how are we going to write this in a statement that's very clear? We can say that um, as the gradient of PQ times the gradient of QR is equal to 11 over 2 times minus 2 over 11 which of course is negative 1 so we can say therefore the the line pq is perpendicular to the line qr okay we can write it in this mathematical kind of uh, you know symbols pq is perpendicular to qr therefore because pq is perpendicular to qr the angle pqr is 90 degrees so we've shown that the um, two gradients, when you multiply them, you give negative 1. That shows that the line PQ and QR are perpendicular, which shows that PQR must be 90 degrees. And that's a nice, quick, easy way of showing um, that, <coughs> proving that result. What you shouldn't do is just leave it like this. Some people will leave it like this. They won't write anything else below it. They'll leave that there, and they'll just show that they're... You've got 11 over 2 and negative 2 over 11, and they'll leave it hanging like that. That might get you one mark, but you must state that because the gradients are negative reciprocals or show that when you multiply the gradient, you get negative 1, that you have 
uh, lines which are perpendicular, which therefore means PQR is 90. It should be something like that written there to get the full marks for the question. All right, now for part B. It says, hence or otherwise, find the center of C. Okay, so there's, other, there's different ways we could do this, very complicated ways, but the easiest way of doing it is to use this fact. And whenever you see the word hence, whenever you see the word hence, basically what it means is that there's something in the question previously that's going to help us. And normally, the, the method of hence is normally way easier than the otherwise method. Okay, so that's why you should, <coughs> you see the word hence, you should stop and think for a little bit, what is it about this question that's going to help me find the center of the circle? Okay, and if you go back to what you learned in IGCSE maths, you should have learned about angles in circles. And whenever you have an angle that is subtended, which is 90 degrees, like the angle PQR, then that means it must be subtended by the diameter. An angle which is subtended by a chord in the circle and the angle is 90 degrees, well, that chord is actually not a normal chord, it's actually the diameter. Any angle that stands on the diameter will always be a right angle. So this angle PQR is a right angle, okay? So therefore PR must be the diameter. So we can say as the angle PQR is equal to 90 degrees, therefore PQ, PR, sorry, PR, PR is the diameter. PR is the diameter. Okay, so now, if you want to find the center of C, now the center of a circle, okay, is basically the midpoint of the diameter. So let me call this, uh, actually they've got the letter C as the name of the circle, let me call this M, capital M. This is the midpoint of the circle. Six, we can say the midpoint of the circle, therefore, um, the, the, sorry, the midpoint of the diameter, which is the, the center of the circle, is going to be the average of the x coordinates. So you take the x coordinates and you add them together. So you have negative 7 plus 23 divided by 2. That's the average of the x coordinates. And the y coordinates, you have negative 26 plus 14 divided by 2. And that will give you your coordinates. So I have 23 minus 7, which is 16. 16 divided by 2 is 8. And you have uh, negative 26 plus 14 that's going to give you negative 12 negative 12 divided by 2 is negative 6 so that is the center of the circle so you can say the center is 8 negative 6 and now we need to find the radius of the circle well we know the radius is half the radius is half of the diameter and we can find the diameter of the circle by finding the length of the well, we could find the dis distance between the center and any of these two, three points, actually. Or well, we could find just half of the diameter. So the diameter would be the square root of the change in the x squared. So you can say um, minus 7 minus 23, all squared, plus the change in y squared, which is negative 26 minus 14, all squared. So this is going to give you the square root of that's 30 squared plus, and that's um, 40 squared. Okay, so that's it's actually like a 3, 4, 5 triangle. 30, 40, and 50 it looks like then. Therefore, we're going to have, um, basically, this is going to be the square root of um, 160 plus 90, which is 250. So D is equal to 50, okay? So therefore, we can say the radius is a half of the diameter. So the radius is going to be 25 units. So that's the radius, a half of the diameter. And that's the answer to this question. We've got the center is 8, negative 6. And the radius is 25. So that's part 1 and 2 done of question part B. Now we're going to go on to part C.